I was I was born in the Pacific Islands, yeah. um, so there was no such things as, as cookbooks um, when I was growing up. Then I left to to move to New Zealand when I was about seven, eight years old. But I do remember my mum used to always have this uh, Alison Hulse, um cookbook. I think she was be something like the the, the more modern uh, uh, Alison. Is it Mrs. Beaton? Uh, but she was. I think Alison Hulse was around the seventies, eighties. Um, and every household in New Zealand has this Alison Hulse, uh, is it Alison Hulse cookbook? And uh, on the cover of it, and I think it was baking powder <laughs> on the on the cover. Um, that was probably one of the first ones that I come across as a child. Um, and then uh, later on, you know, in the cooking uh, world, when when that, my career started as a young chef. Um, uh, we had a lot of the older Rue books, Albert Rue and uh, Michelle's pastry books uh, were the known, um, as well as the very rare Escoffier cover um, now and then. But it was mostly that, uh, I recall. And you had a, a very thick uh, sort of to-do cookery book that you had, but nothing specific. In my career earlier on in New Zealand, I competed a lot. Uh, while I was working as a young commie, um, which was great, but uh, I won a lot of competitions and then ended up representing New Zealand abroad and, and, and internationals. Um, so when I was sort of going into a job, I felt that as a young commie, I was being expected to know everything already, um, you know, as to being taught. I was expected to know, um, which wasn't fair because my face was already in papers and that when I was starting jobs. Um, and as a part of the training for these competitions, I came to the UK to eat um, and to, to sort of look at the style of food here and fell in love with, with, with London. Um, and I felt it was, it was the chance and the opportunity that uh, I had to actually learn as a chef. I had to leave New Zealand and, and come here. I mean, before I started at Gavosh, I, I um, worked in Holland with the friends who have a seafood restaurant there for about three, three, four months. I literally took over for the friend who was having a, b a baby, um, delivered the baby actually before a service. Yeah, <laughs> it was just random, you know, she went into labor, um, couldn't get to the hospital in time. And so I was upstairs delivering this little girl and then I had to go down and, and cook dinner. And it was the most, you know, sort of weird experience that I've done, amazing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the water was hot. I <laughs> know <laughs> that you know the the father did that, but that was you know one of the most uh, amazing experiences as a chef. Uh, after that, you know, going to work at the Gavosh was easy. <laughs> I think everyone has a, a certain level of of cooking or in the industry that they're in, where there is this persona that you are going to show to the people that you work with. Um, you know, okay, for me, it only comes out when my daughter makes me cross, you know, and she says, Mommy, that's why people are scared with you. <laughs> I, I, you know, as, as, as a parent now with, with a child in this industry, I kind of hope she goes for something else, you know, because there is a point where she, if she follows this industry through, where she will have to make a choice of either family or career, and I think maybe in any job, but... As a chef, it's actually a very selfish industry to be in. So I kind of hope she'll go a different pathway. But if she chooses to go for it, I will be behind her, you know, 110%. You know, who knows? She'll be working with Michelle's daughter at some point. <laughs> um, yeah, if anything, uh, you know, she'll have our blessings, whatever she chooses. At the moment, she wants to be a chef ballerina come rock star, you know part-time well, so it's never been done before so yeah. she has my genes so watch out you know, <laughs> um, you know it's, it's very rare that we would have time together as a family so it's very important that we were sort of doing something together not just sitting in front of the tv you know uh if we were cooking a meal if she wasn't at least playing in the same room you know she was she was a part of it she enjoys being a part of it to the point where it kind of hinders dinner is progress sometimes, you know. Um, but, you know, she loves it. But, you know, you can't peel carrots without her. Oh, I want to do it. Or can I chop it up for you? And it's like, you know, I'd really like this done. Okay. And, you know, you can't say no. Because she's like, I'll go get my step, you know. And off she runs to get her little step. And up she goes. On goes her apron, you know. Um, and and it's, it's just something that we made very normal um, for us 
to the point that we can't open a bottle of wine without her tasting it you know um it's it's a part of of our routine as a family and and eating is normal you know lunch is at the table when we're together dinner is at the table as a family you know so when one of us is not there she does feel it you know she really does notice it um I think more so now because I'm home more in the evenings with her that when I'm not there she she does you know feel it if it's just her and her dad whereas she's used to being dad not being there in the evenings um but I think it's very important as a, as a child but I've grown up in a, in a family in our culture where it's very important that everyone eats together um you know and even though we we're from the islands and that dad was always tight on on etiquette at the table you know no singing at the table no elbows on the table <laughs> um and it was only no singing at the table because you choke on your food you know <laughs> it was reason um you know and and the cooking for us in in, in our culture is, is is a family thing as well everyone gets involved at a very young age you know um either preparing it peeling potatoes and and it's a bonding thing. I for up for me certainly, you know, everyone's in the kitchen. You're having a laugh and 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 and, and sort of talking about your day or teasing some family member, you know. But it's all about this, you know, preparing food. It's what I wanted was a book that was not for a chef, you know. Um, and I always find when you're looking, even as a chef, when you're looking at books, is the pictures of what you want to see. You know, it gives you some idea of what you're reading. So I wanted this book to have almost as many pictures as the recipes because for me I think it's very important you're teaching um, someone who's not a chef you know to, to cook and you want it to be easy so that was my main aim it was very important for me at the beginning it had to have a lot of photos in it um, yeah I, the, the, the funniest thing I don't like is, is, is the cover <laughs> I think, you know, it's for that. but I don't like photos of myself you see so to suddenly arrive to sign something like 400 you know books of yourself and you're looking at this cover mm. but the funniest thing because yeah I come from a Pacific Islander family Samoan family so they were very expressive and uh, I was showing my dad and my dad was like oh I love it darling you know it looks really good a book where you know shows a big woman on the cover that she eats <laughs> <laughs> That's my culture. Yeah. yeah, you just say it and it's done, isn't it? <laughs> so that sort of sticks in my head. It's like, thanks, Dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, now looking back at it, I think it was quite crazy. You know, um, I was still doing five days a week at the Gav. Oh, sorry, at the at the restaurant. Um, I had this child to to look after. So the routine was. Um, I mean, I had recipes, and that uh, and some that needed to be altered. To, to sort of make it uh, easier in layman's terms, I guess. And that was the hardest part for me, was you know writing down how hot the oven has to be, things you take for granted as a chef, um, how long a piece of meat cooks, where I just go by touch. You know, um, This, I found, was a learning curve, something that I never had to think about, you take for granted as a chef, that you know, okay, yeah, you touch, maybe seven minutes, but it has to be very precise when you're, when you're doing a book. Um, so it was a lot of uh, me sending stuff off to my editor and her sort of asking these questions, which were really upsetting me. You know, I was like, what do you mean? How high does the flame have to be? <laughs> you, know? And so, you know, I say, you know, cook a piece of salmon and she'd write back and said, yes, but how, how hot does the pan need to be? You know, and I just found the really mundane and, and questions that just don't, happen in, in in my world you know to suddenly have to put it down in writing was 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 the hardest part for me um was that you know so the edits of it but so it was a balancing act i would get up at half five go to the gym go to work come home pick up my daughter bedtime she'd you know do my emailing and then i'd write or, or um the recipes and, and work until midnight one in the morning and that was life for about five six months um, you know, lost a lot of friends along the way, <laughs> but yeah, I th you know, I had a great support network, you know, and I literally I sent an email out to everyone. I said, listen, I've got this book to do. You will not see me for a while because in between it, I had filming, you know, and, and everything else. And it was just a balancing act. I guess you know, a friend of mine says, you know, she says, it's, with me, it's, I just get on with it. You know, if you've got something to do, just get on with it. And it's not for the rest of your life. It's a little short period of your life and the reward at the end of it will be worth it. 
So, you know, there were times when I thought I was going to burn all the recipes up. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then this little voice would be like, you know what, it's going to be worth it at the end, just get through it. Um, but no, I enjoyed, I'd probably say I enjoyed 90% of it. <laughs> the worst kitchen experience, wow. You know what, there's been a few, but you get through them. Um, you pick yourself up and you get through and if you, you know, the saying really stands true that if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. And I have walked out a couple of times just to regain that cool, you know. So instead of like completely exploding and, and, you know, throwing something at someone, you know, you just go, you know, just walk out two minutes, have a cigarette. Okay, I used to smoke. Um, <laughs> you know, I used to, would literally get out for two minutes, deep breath, reassess, you know, where you're at, sort your head out in the fridge and then come back in. You just need, you know, a couple of minutes out. Um, anything that really stands to mind, I remember, and, I, and then and Michelle still laughs about this as well. I remember um, I was being taught, I just started on the, took over the meat section, and I was being taught how to make this certain uh, dish on there. And uh, I don't know, the, the, the guy who was teaching me at the time wasn't very patient, uh, presumed I had done it before, but I hadn't, you know, so he was going crazy and he's throwing pans and sort of saying, no, you're going to do it like this, you know, we have big pans. And so I was sort of behind him, you know, working. He was like, you should know it by now. And I was just, you know, I think, and then when he left, it was not until he sort of left and, you know, so I get angry as a woman. I think you get angry and you cry. You know, it's just not crying because you're upset, but the fact that you're so upset. And so I was cooking. I had my head down in the oven. And I was cooking. And I was crying during the service. And Michelle walked past me. And he was saying, the tears of the clown. They're always going down. And I looked up at him and he goes, oh, sorry, darling. I thought I was singing it quietly. <laughs> and it actually made me laugh. You know, it actually made me, you know what? I can deal with this, you know, because it's, it's, it's just how it is. You know, you deal with it, you get on with it. And, you know, I walked out, washed my face, came back in and forgot it the next day. Well, not quite because I still remember it now. But, <laughs> it, it, you know, it is a tough industry to be in and you got to take it. Otherwise, you go and you become a florist, which was another option along the line. <laughs> well, you know, we're down to our last four, aren't you? So ideally, I'd love it to be either... James, Anton, Kerry, or Ollie. <laughs> Very good. <answer. laughs> One of them would be great. <laughs>